what struck me about um, Ranciere's aesthetics is that they they exist. I think he says a priori um, and uh, in a <laughs> in a uh, judicial situation that has its own specific means. But I will just I'm just taking that as something that's either uh, prior or um, more fundamental, sort of in the ether. Um, that's aesthetics. It is it predicates the polis, but aesthetics nonetheless constitutes and continues to shape politics, even once a polis is instantiated or organized. Um, and I perhaps want to ask you all if you think um, scriptures are aesthetics. Um, we are currently experiencing the repercussions of increased corporate power meddling with the government, right? So when you have a case like Citizens United that passes and says that corporations don't no longer have a cap to fund um, elections and campaigns and all of that, you're going to see certain people, right, run billion-dollar campaigns and million-dollar campaigns that, that ordinary people just can't compete with, right? And so I was a student of John Powell at Berkeley. I don't know if you know him. Um, and he talks about this idea of the circle of human concern, right? The idea being that the people that are within this circle are the people that are cared for, loved, um, in society, period, by the government and interpersonally, right? And what we've seen throughout the years is different people being pushed out of that circle, Muslims, LGBTQ folks, undocumented folks, Latinos, etc. And what we've seen is a shifting of corporations being put in the center, right? So profits over people. Scripture um, is an aesthetic externalization. It's something we can point to outside of ourselves that provides uh, validation that comes back to us. This is so you now could have those that are in power that have gerrymandered to the point, and it's not just Republicans, it's Republicans and Democrats. So you have those that have created these maps that are the equivalent of a two-year-old and a crayon and their first attempt at drawing. Because you literally say this room, I will pull out you two, no, I'll grab you, I'll leave you out. I'll swoop, swoop back around, I'm gonna leave you out. I'm gonna leave you out because you're a female. And you create this. But then you also have democratic seats that were created that are all white. They took all the minorities out of their democratic districts. So it really becomes that question that people keep asking, have we elected our representatives or have our represent representatives selected us? Right? Violence violence is becoming the rule of the day. We, we're accepting death threats against professions. We're accepting white supremacists with AR-15s marching the streets, and we're protecting them. We we laugh at what Trump's doing in the White House, but come on, Trump's, Trump is empowering and offering a discourse and political platform to the KKK, neo-Nazis and fascists. And we have not caught up in our thinking yet, you know, and I think that that's what I think that's what kind of alienates a lot of my work from other people is because the criticism is not just on the routine aspect. Intellectual projects that we hold don't have any power because they haven't really identified the problem and the motivations behind this resurgence.